My name is Melanie George, and I am an associate curator and director of artist initiatives here at Jacob's Pillow, and uh, am the scholar in residence this week for Abraham in Motion. And to my left is Kyle Abraham. Hi, everybody. I feel like I want to start by saying on behalf of Kyle Abraham and D'Angelo lovers everywhere, thank you for this piece. <laughs> um, it's, it's so gorgeous and uh, lush and also sparse in a really beautiful way. And, uh, and it has all the bangers in it too. So like it's just, give, it's just giving, 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 giving. Um, uh, dancers are gonna come out and join us momentarily, but we're gonna get into some conversation. Uh, why don't, why don't we actually start there with the playlist that yeah, we yeah. hear when we enter the theater? Um, so many songs that I recognize because I'm an old, I'm an oldie, but like grown. No, we're grown. We're not old. We're grown. Yeah, I mean the gray says old, but I'm also grown <laughs> too. Uh, and um, and particularly, I'm curious about the moment where we have all entered. We are in our seats, and then specifically, we hear Anita Baker's "Sweet Love" to lead us into the piece. Yeah. So, can you tell us about that playlist? Sure. Yeah. So that is my grown folks playlist, um, and I call it that because I think you know some of the songs are songs that me hanging around my parents growing up at the card parties, those were the songs that they would play, some Luther, some Tina Marie, you know, maybe some Osley Brothers. And I thought to myself, if I had kids, what would my grown folks playlist be? And so you're hearing some of this kind of idea of intergenerational vibe and, and groove. So we get some Mary J. Blige, next to a Luther, some Prince, depending on, you know, for doing late seating, uh, it, it all, it all kind, of, kind of weaves together. And I think, you know, that Anita Baker song, I think is just, it's a really beautiful and profound one to kind of start us off with an evening that is really hoping to honor ideas around love. Yeah, beautiful. Uh, so I'm curious about time. Um, not in terms of like duration, but like in terms of where this piece lives in time. And there's moments when I watch it and I feel like, oh, it's happening in the 70s. And there's moments when I watch it and I feel like it's happening in the 90s. And, and this particular referencing Sure Shot and Song 2, which are songs from the 90s for those of us who remember, uh, uh, by the Beastie Boys and, and, and Blur. And, and the playlist also, but then also it feels very present for now and also timeless. And so, um, particularly because you spoke about, you know, your remembrances of being at your parents' parties, I'm wondering where time sits in this work for you. Yeah, thanks. You know, it, it is kind of all encompassing. I love playing with this idea of just nodding and referencing to certain time periods, even the, the costuming. So talking with Karen Young, my collaborator on the costume design, I was thinking about high-waisted pants honoring not only the Harlem Renaissance and thinking about like, you know, at time about high-waisted pants, but also in the 80s and 90s when the, that same kind of fashion came back. Um, so there's moments of that and Catherine's costume that she's wearing. In some ways you'll see, you can't see here a photo of my mother wearing a jumpsuit, um, but kind of just making these nods to the 80s was important to me. And the visual art you're seeing here is by Joe Buckingham. And if, if you all are um, De La Soul fans, he did a lot of the album artwork for, for those albums. Amazing. Um, so it's, it's kind of referencing these different times, but hopefully there's still these ideas ideas of present day, but definitely a nod to, to uh, times in which I either grew up or grew, uh, um, gathered a lot of inspiration from over the years. Yeah, wonderful. So we've now been joined by two dancers from the piece. Uh, I'm going to let you introduce yourselves. Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Catherine Kirk. She, her pronouns, originally from Dallas, Texas. That's normally the spiel. I've been dancing and working with Kyle for nine years. Hello, my name is Martel Ruffin, um, originally from the south side of Chicago. Um, I've been dancing with AIM for two years, and pronouns are he, him, his. Thank you. So, um, I'm really curious, uh, I'm going to preface this with um, D'Angelo, for those who do not know, is a legend, and also sometimes a bit of a recluse. And so I think generationally, there are some people younger than you and I, is putting us in the same general generation, who were less familiar with D'Angelo. And it, his verses was the thing that made me realize it. Like, oh, some young folks don't maybe actually know who he is. And so I'm wondering, what was your relationship as dancers to the music of D'Angelo? I'm, I'm well-versed as well. Um, 
yeah, my older cousin who I looked up to, who got to see the show in Dallas, was like, I bumped this CD for you for the first time. Like, we just went all the way back. Um, yeah, I've, I feel like D'Angelo has definitely been an integral part of the soundtrack of my life, my adolescence, my love life, in the cooking in the kitchen, laughing with family, playing games, like, He's everywhere. Um, and it's a really beautiful thing to experience this work and create new relationships. And it's lovely because I think, you know, there have been times when we've created to Nina, to Kendrick Lamar, and like my relationship with the music shifts in a different way. Or sometimes I hear it, I have that like, <laughs> ah, what's the step? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But with D'Angelo, like, you, He's just this partner in the work and I can still like enjoy <clears throat> his music and my life in the ways that I always have and then totally feel enriched and present in this work as well while I'm in this work. Yeah. yeah. Martel? I too am familiar with D'Angelo. Um, different experience. Um, it was a how does it feel video for me that kind of made me for like, everyone. <laughs> I don't, I'm not really into D'Angelo, but um, I think uh, I know doing the work with um, Mr. Abraham and um, uh, him going through the catalog has made me really fall in love and like have a real ear for him and, you know, now see who D'Angelo has been listening to like Prince and all the other greats. So uh, thank you. So... Where does it start? Where, is it, I want to I wanna do an evening link work to D'Angelo? Is it I have these ideas about love? Is it, oh, I met D'Angelo and maybe he'll let me use his music? Like, what's the, what's the, <laughs> how do you get from point A of it? What is the point A idea? Sure, you know, there's lots of different points of entry. I think in the case of this work, we were having an audition for another dancer several years ago, and I just started thinking about just, black love in a way. And I started thinking about my parents and thinking about my experience going to a historically black college for a year uh, and wanting to think about making a work that really encapsulated a lot of that experience. And it felt like D'Angelo was a, uh, a good artist for me to, to kind of dive into or really kind of uh, highlight in this work. Uh, so writing a grant, uh, writing the narrative to try and figure out the language. And, you know, I think people don't think about dance with hypothesizing and all of that, but a lot of the narratives that you're writing several years before you get to the stage is a bit of, you know, creating a hypothesis of like, maybe this thing will work. Maybe I can make a dance uh, inspired by Boys in the Hood and set it to music written for contralto singers. Who knows? Maybe I can make this work that's honoring a different time period while reflecting on a music that, you know, started in 95, 96, and the last album probably around 2016. How can I kind of make something that, um, gives glimpses of all of that and still stays um, true to the, the family members that I'm hoping to honor in this work. Yes. So uh, before I turn it to audience questions, I want to specifically ask a question about your duet. Um, and it's for the three of you, truly. Um, but when I saw the work in DC at the Kennedy Center, um, you know, I've been listening to we've been listening to voodoo for 20 plus years now. And you specifically mentioned Untitled, How Does It Feel? Which is like the song that broke D'Angelo open in some ways that were good for him, in some ways that were not good for him. Uh, and then I watched the piece and I experienced that song in a way, it redefined it for me. And um, I'm curious how how you all enter that specific song and doing that duet. And, and you know, you've set us up for all, with giving us all this information about relationship. And then we get to that song, like the song. And just, and we're broken open. And I just, I just collectively want you all to speak to that because it feels really profound to me and, um, and remarkably skillful. Oh, thank you. I can start. Um... Yeah, this definitely, creating this duet was towards the like pre-pandemic tail end of the creation process. We, December yeah, December 2019, we had every other section in rotation and Kyle was mentioning adding another section and I'm like, mm. 
Um, and I wasn't yet with Martel. I had a different partner, and Kyle and that person were walking, uh, working in a studio together. And then I entered. Um, and Kyle was like working with headphones. Um, so we were just like moving while Kyle's playing the music to himself. And then we get to this point where he's like, all right, I'm gonna play it. I had no idea it was going to be this song. And I like remember like my cheeks just feeling flush, but also like you said the sense of like, this is going to be something new and deep pleasure and like an exhale. And it was a really beautiful process because this song, I definitely have my own relationship to it, my own memories to it. Um, it it's intimate, it's sensitive, it's completely human in how we love and experience pleasure. Um, and it's also all of that in the work with loads of support going between two partners and to me what is the maturation of Martel's character, Richard. Um, also internally, just knowing Kyle, working with Kyle for this long, I think we had conversation about your hesitancy with this song and Brown Sugar yeah. because they are both the song. And so many audience members have their own relationship, not only to the song, but to those music videos, this one in particular. So I was also, it was a sense of like pride, like, all right, we're gonna do this. Like that hesitation can be in the past and we're gonna create our own relationship to this, um, which is just beautiful. So it was a nice risk and it paid off to me. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, Kyle's a genius. Um, I think uh, it was just so tasteful. Um, one, learning uh, to do what I had to learn uh, through video, and Catherine's so beautiful, intelligent, and all these other things. So I was a slight bit intimidated when I first had to do this audition over the phone. And um, Every day, or you know, every time I perform it, uh, it's always different. And um, even looking into her, her eyes, she allows me to get even more vulnerable and um, tap into other spaces that I didn't know exist. Um, and I always, you know, have to thank Kyle for not um, exploiting me by like take off your clothes or anything. He's just like taste was just enough. And um, thank you again. Do you have any thoughts about this one? Sure, yeah. You know, I think they both um, really spoke to a lot a lot of what, what it is. But I think, yeah, I was really hesitant. Uh, even when I spoke to D'Angelo himself, I, I didn't necessarily want to use this song because it's like I was saying to the, the students in the uh, contemporary program right now, it's like, if I was making a work to Brandy, I wouldn't want to use The Boy Is Mine because everyone's like, oh, this, the, the woman who sings The Boy Is Mine? Like, no, <laughs> the one who sings so many epic, amazing songs. Um, but I felt like we, we needed, there was something that we needed that wasn't here yet. Um, just a love, another level of depth. And I think, you know, um, Faye Driscoll, who's one of my favorite artists, who has been presented uh, here in the, in the Duke Theater, um, maybe, I think maybe in two different occasions, by Pam. Uh, she's so talented at um, finding this place between like humor and then just kind of like pulling the rug on, yeah. underneath you and you just start crying. You're like, why am I crying? Um, and I, I think that, you know, one of those things I learned from her is, you know, with, with Martel's character allowing, and Catherine as well, allowing that humor, but then getting to a place where you are so connected to these people that you, you feel for them. And I think this, this duet is really a testament to vulnerability, because I think that's super important in a relationship. Trust, sharing of weight, and sharing the weight in a relationship is so important that that's what I really wanted, really wanted to kind of um, honor and, and focus in on. So we have time for a few audience questions. Uh, anyone have any questions for Kyle and Martel and Catherine? So I'm just going to repeat it so that we can all hear. Uh, the uh, comment was on uh, the relationship of movement to dancers to culture. And the question is uh, how much of it was choreographed and how much it comes from the dancers' own bodies, histories, so forth. Sure, thank you. Um, Culture is a, depending on how you're looking at it, a very specific thing. Um, 
I like to think that all of the training and the way that we are and live and the people we're around influence and make up our culture. So us studying ballet, capoeira, hip hop, African dance, break dance, um, waltz, all of those things are a part of our culture because we've learned those things and have experienced them. Uh, so it's part of what makes up the work. Um, I, I love improvisation. I grew up uh, first kind of living in the social dance world of rave and hip hop culture before studying other codified forms uh, like um, modern and contemporary dance and ballet and tap and things like that. So a lot of the movement that I'm generating for my body is coming from that perspective. Um, I, in some instances with this work, I have generated the material for my body and other instances they have. Uh, there is, a, I think, a really great kind of repartee where we can kind of create and explore and continue to build um, both movement and text alike. So it, I think th things aren't but so precious, um, but it's very kind of collaborative in every way that you can think of the word collaboration. If you all want to expand on that. Yeah, I definitely think with my experience in this work, um, my hand was more um, active in creating uh, like nuance and bringing my character into true form. Tina is her name. Um, yes. Yeah. She, oh. um, <clears throat> and kind of in that same line that you were speaking of, writing this line between it definitely being a character, but not a caricature, and um, straying away from what has already been seen and, and rooting her and grounding her in humanity and reality and vulnerability, which I really think also helps with the un an untitled love section. But movement wise, I would say most of what I do is generated by Kyle. Um, we created this, began working on this much more heavily in 2018 in Perlis and Kyle sent some of us sections that he had ideas he was interested in us um, doing and Kyle had sent video improvised and crafted to each um, section or song. So I, the solo that I do in the jumpsuit, I learned off video and that's, you know, that's, that's Kyle. The, the, the chair section was all of these things, the root, like all of these definitely come. And then in Spanish joint, there was some task and play for us to create like an eight count, 16 count, something like that. And in the slow motion section, it's not like Kyle's like, step with your left foot, step with your right foot. So there, there's that play, but all in all, I would say most of like the moves come from boss man, which is also just really nice to embody. And it's beautiful, right? Give it up. Yes. Indeed. Uh, we have time for one more question. And I believe that's Kate Mattingly who's gonna ask it. <laughs> so just repeating it so we can all, can, all hear. Uh, the question was about um, feeling that a moment within the work was reminiscent of an earlier work or referencing an earlier work and if that was intentional. Um, yeah. Sure, yeah, thank you for that. Uh, so I think that that moment, that moment in this work, a uh, section for the song entitled Prayer, um, it's less about referencing another work, but referencing what's happening in this world. Uh, we're, you know, it, the section that precedes it, the uh, song Spanish, we're really joyous, and you're seeing a dancer like Donovan duck walking and voguing. I think it's important to acknowledge as we celebrate the culture how so many people from not only ballroom culture, but you know our American culture are dying every day. So we can celebrate and we can make this dance to be really cele celebratory, but we also need to make sure people are acknowledging that we're dying before for a fair trial. You know, if we have a trial, uh, uh, if we have a, um, a trial, it's probably not fair. But all of that was really important to kind of put in this work in the same way that it was in, 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 in pavement. And I, I remember there's a dance writer who I will not name, who made a comment when they saw a work of mine called um, Untitled America, subsequently, uh, or coincidentally, um, which was looking at the cyclical nature of black families that had been in the prison system. And I was bringing up this conversation physically uh, about how um, so often we were shot before we're even um, arrested or, or any of those things. And so, and that, that critic made the comment that it seemed redundant to have these bodies on the ground. I'm like, it is, it is. 
Um, and so ever since, every single dance I've made, whether you go to New York City Ballet and see The Runaway, you'll see a dancer that's on the ground because we're still dying. So it's in every work. It doesn't matter where I am. Royal Ballet, same thing. New York City Ballet, doesn't matter. Uh, Hubbard Street, same thing, yeah. Well, uh, we're at time, and so I just want to... <laughs> positive note. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, I, I, I just want to offer to the audience that having seen this work more than once, it re rewards repeated viewings, and so come back and see it again. There's actually uh, four, three more shows to see. Uh, tell your friends. And just thank you so much to all of you and to the company for this gorgeous performance. Thank you. Good night.